Welcome to the Planning Commission meeting of March 24th, 2022. My name is Vern Crow and I'm the chairperson of the commission. The Planning Commission is a citizen body appointed by the City Council. The commission is empowered to make final decisions on certain matters with those being appealable to City Council. On other matters, the commission acts in an advisory role to the council with the council making the final decision. You will have an opportunity to address the commission during the public hearing portion of the meeting. Your testimony is appreciated and encouraged. The commission acts from a written agenda and you will need to fill out a yellow speaker card and give it to the city staff if you wish to speak on an item. Copies of the agenda and the speaker cards are located on the table just inside the main door to the council chambers. At this time, please be sure to silence your cell phones. There are seven members appointed to the Planning Commission. At this time, I will ask the commissioners to introduce themselves and state the district they are representing, starting from my far right. John Crow, Mayoral District. Tom Cole, Barrel District. Gary Hirsch, Choya District. Martin Nowakowski, Yucca District. John Gears, Agatillo District. And Vern Crow, I represent Cactus. I'll let the record show that all members of the Planning Commission are present with the exception of the vacant Saguaro District seat. The Planning Commission receives staff assistance and guidance from the Planning Division and the City Attorney's Office. Tabitha Perry, would you please introduce the city staff who are present this evening? Yes, um, thank you, Chairperson Crow. Good evening, Commissioners. To my left is Jim Gruber, Deputy City Attorney. Across the dais is Lisa Wilson, Recording Secretary this evening. Um, making the two presentations would be by City Planners, Christina Lavelle, as well as Alex Lama. And I am Tabitha Perry, Interim Planning Manager. Thank you, Tabitha. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on an item not on tonight's agenda? Okay, hearing none and seeing none. We'll go on to the approval of the minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve the revised minutes of January 13th Planning Commission regular meeting 2022 and February 24th, 2022 for both the special workshops and the Planning Commission regular meeting? Commissioner Gear. All the other years. Lisa, did you get that? Okay. With with those corrections, do I hear a motion? Chairman Crow. On the minutes, the the workshop. We're, we're approving all three of them at once. Yes, we are. Okay. On the workshop. If I can find it. I made a comment about the comments that I made on the second page doesn't make any sense. And as soon as I find it. Okay, Commissioner Gears asked about would be there a final inspection. I think I was trying to say if there would be a check for the airflow quality in the final inspection before the occupancy permit was issued, is what I would rather say. Okay, what I think we ought to do is just uh, uh, remove February 24th, 2022 special workshop and planning commission regular meeting from this agenda. We can now just focus on approving the revised January 13th planning commission regular meeting minutes and bring back February 24th with all the corrections at our next meeting. Do I hear a motion to do that? So moved. Second. 
I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of January 13th, 2022 Planning Commission regular meeting as written in the revised minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Perry, are there any withdrawals or continuances this evening? Chairperson Crow, there are none. Okay, as there are none, let's move on to the public hearing. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak on this item? Thank you, hearing none and seeing none. The purpose of the public hearing is to provide interested parties an opportunity to pre present testimony for the commissioner's commission's consideration. We will follow the same procedures for each item. I will call the applicant number, application number, and the name of the applicant. Staff will present their report and answer questions from the commission. The applicant will be given the opportunity to make a presentation and answer questions from the commission. Other persons who wish to testify will be asked to do so and answer questions from the commission. The applicant will have an opportunity for closing comments. Staff will be asked for any final comments on the application and procedural guidance. I will then close the public hearing and ask for a motion prior to discussion, if there is any further discussion from the commissioners. You will need to state your name and address for the record if you wish to speak on an item. Please be brief and to the point and avoid repetition. I reserve the right to limit the length of your testimony. All exhibits shown to the commission become part of the permanent record and must be submitted for the file. Large groups should designate a spokesperson, which doesn't look like we're gonna have that tonight. Applause or other disruptions which delay the hearing will not be tolerated. We only have two public hearing items this evening. Our first agenda item is case number ZON21-28. Ms. Lavelle, will you present the case? Good evening, Chairperson Crow and Commissioners. Tonight I'll be presenting the Sunrise Apartments Rezone CON 21-28. This request is to rezone 10 gross acres from C2 General Commercial to R4 Multiple Residence. This is to allow a 120 unit multifamily development. The applicant is Francisco Soto, and he is representing H&M One Real Estate. This is a general plan map of the area. As you can see, the site is has a general plan designation of medium to high density 12, which means that they could uh, get eight to 12 dwelling units per acre. As you can see across the street um, off of 59th Avenue, it is uh, has a general plan designation of general commercial. And to the south, it has a general plan uh, of general commercial. But to the north, it is high density residential 20. And to the west is going to be medium to high density 12. This is a zoning map that shows the uh, general zoning around in the vicinity. As you can see, the property is zoned currently uh, general commercial. To the west, it's zoned uh, R4, which is multiple residence. To the north, it's zoned R4, which is multiple residence. And then um, across 59th, it's zoned general commercial. And just directly to the south, it's zoned C2, but a little bit west of that, it's zoned R4. And then um, to the west of the uh, mobile home site, it's single family residential R16.
Here is a bird's eye view of the property. Uh, it just gives you kind of an uh, example of what's going on in the vicinity. As you can see, the property is vacant. Um, it's relatively flat. It's a fairly narrow, um, long parcel, and it has been vacant um, uh, for a number of years. To the west of the uh, site is a mobile home park. It's the Fountain Hills Mobile Home Park. Uh, to the north across Montebello is a multifamily residential condominiums. Uh, to the uh, right across 59th Avenue um, to the east, it is uh, commercially zoned and there's commercial properties. And to the south across Missouri Avenue, it's commercial and um, just a west of that, it's multifamily. So here are some site photos that kind of give you an idea of what the property looks like at the street. This is looking north from Missouri Avenue um, at the corner of 59th in Missouri. If, as you can see to the west of the site, it's um, fully developed as a mo uh, mobile home park. To the north, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see that there are multifamily residential units. And then to the east, it's commercial. Okay, so here's another kind of bird's eye view. You can see this is from, this is looking west from 59th Avenue. This kind of just gives you an idea of, uh, you can see that the entire western, or yeah, the entire western portion of the property is budding a, um, a mobile home park with uh, sing, virtually single family residences. And, um, and you can also see the existing access, the existing sidewalks, and the landscaping. So this is the preliminary site plan. I apologize, it was a big site plan. It was hard to fit on this page. But, so the applicant is uh, proposing nine between uh, one and two story buildings. There, um, some of the buildings will be one story, some will be two. 30 of these units will be um, one bedroom apartments. 90 will be two bedroom apartments. They, um, there is access that is can be taken off of um, Montebello and Missouri. It's actually a gated and it has an exit only. The access is also, the main access is taken off of 59th, as you can see, and this will be interior inside of the site. It will be gated with um, a, a Knox box. Um, with that, the applicant has is proposing um, a number of amenities in this each. So for every three of these buildings, there will be a courtyard that will have a ramada and a grassy area. And centralized in, in the site, there is not only a courtyard with a ramada and a grassy area, they also have a tot lot. They will be providing a pool and a spa, um, barbecue area, um, you can see the leasing office. The leasing office will include a fitness room. It will also include a clubhouse. And then as you can see throughout the site, they have pedestrian walkways that kind of interconnect the buildings with each other and kind of they're kind of situated as kind of their own like little communities. Each one of these buildings um, has, will, each one of the buildings in each unit will have a a private open space, which will include a patio or a balcony, depending on whether you're on the first floor or you're on the second floor. Um, each one of the units will have one covered parking space provided, and then um, a, an additional parking space. And then they also have provided for guest parking as well. There will be um, a significant landscape buffer um, out um, along 59th Avenue and Missouri Avenue, as well as a, 
um, at the western portion of the property and along Montebello. And they will be uh, utilizing an existing uh, six foot tall uh, screen wall. So here's an example of the building elevations. Um, the, the applicant is proposing to um, have these, um, they're, basically they're calling them luxury apartments. They are, um, they're each set is set off by a breezeway. Each set of um, units is set off by a breezeway. They um, have a, some, they're, neutral colors of grays and browns. Uh, the majority of the building will be stucco. However, they are going to be adding some elements of stone and um, they will be having metal, um, metal uh, railings with um, inserts in them as well. And as you can see, uh, the buildings have a variation in um, in kind of the heights to kind of give um, an additional interest and to kind of provide kind of more of a sophisticated look. The applicant has met all of the public hearing requirements um, that are required by state statute and by the zoning ordinance. The applicant held a virtual neighborhood meeting on January 19th, 2022. Prior to the meeting, uh, one comment was received via phone. Um, this comment was made by a one of the residents of the mobile home park and just had some concerns about the change in use. Also had some concerns on um, just kind of uh, traffic and some issues with that and maybe some um, issues with uh, services and how those be provided. The applicant actually reached out to the, um, the neighbor, answered the questions as best as they could, and that those responses are in your um, CPP final report. Okay, just a moment, please. So section 3.809 of the zoning ordinance states that an amendment to the zoning ordinance and official zoning map of the city of Glendale shall be approved only if A, the amendment is consistent with the policies and objectives of the general plan. So the general plan designation for this property is medium to high density residential. 12, and this is eight to 12 dwelling units per acre. The general plan designation allows for a combination of either single family, detached or attached, um, and multifamily dwelling units. The applicant is proposing to develop a 120 unit apartment complex over 10 gross acres, and the proposed density and use is consistent with the general plan designation of medium to high density 12. B, the proposed amendment furthers the public health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of Glendale. Okay, so to the, to the west of this property, the properties are all, they're zoned R4. Um, the land use goal, LU-2.4 of the general plan states that the city shall ensure that adequate buffers between residential and non-residential uses, uses are included. So this meets that objective, that this provides a natural buffer between the um, mobile home park to the west and to the commercial um, properties to the east of the site. Also rezoning the property from C2 to R4, it, it allows for there to be a uh, lower density than would otherwise happen, and it would uh, and it uh, it reduces the um, intensive commercial uses that would not be compatible with residential units. 
Finally, the housing element, HE-3.6 of the general plan states, the city shall encourage plan residential communities to provide a range of housing options and promote socioeconomic balance in the Glendale housing supply. This uh, proposal meets that objective. It provides for new housing and a variety of housing options in this area. As we stated before, this area has a mix of mobile home park. It also has single family residential and it has multifamily residential. And this will fit just perfectly in this neighborhood. It also will um, allow the applicant to develop an underutilized property to its highest and best use, and this keeps in mind the surrounding neighborhood. C, if the amendment is made to the official zoning map, the proposed change will include any conditions necessary to mitigate any adverse impacts on businesses, persons, or properties adjacent to the requested amendment. So any adverse impacts from rezoning to, uh, to R4 from C2 are addressed in the development regulations of the zoning district. They are also addressed in the landscape ordinance, the parking ordinance, and the, um, the city's engineering and transportation. Finally, uh, if a finding is made that the, a finding is made that there are adequate schools, if the amendment to the official zoning, zoning map, and if Section three point eight one two is applicable, the applicant sent off their certificate of adequate schools to the school district. They waited the allotted thirty day um, window to which the school district um, by zoning ordinance is required to respond, and the school district did not respond, so it has been determined that there are adequate schools for any students that would um, be made available to the school district. Staff finds that the request conforms to these standards and recommends approval subject to the following stipulations. Development shall be in substantial conformance with the applicant's site plan dated November 10th, 2021, and the applicant's narrative date stamp January 21st, 2022. All sidewalks and public roadways shall be placed within public right-of-way. If additional right-of-way is required to accommodate sidewalk within turn lanes, it will need to be dedicated as public right-of-way. That concludes my presentation. I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Commissioners, anything for Ms. Lavelle? I have a few questions. Commissioner Gear. Well, what makes them luxury? Well, um, and I can let the the applicant okay. um, speak to that a little bit better because they will be presenting. But what in um, in my mind, what makes them luxury apartments is that they are providing a um, over and above the amount of amenities um, that would otherwise be required of the R4 zoning district. They have worked very hard with staff uh, to uh, achieve this um, really um, sophisticated look of these apartments, but also, you know, it's a gated community. They have ample open space. They have a pool and all sorts of amenities that many of the apartments throughout the city do not. Um, they also are providing um, uh, just really significant um, landscaping set and setbacks as well. Um, uh, hopefully that answers oh, that your answers, question. And then I have a, a few more questions. The sure. traffic, you didn't say anything about traffic. Uh, this is a gated community. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to know how many gates there are for pedestrians and where are the school buses going to stop to pick up all of the children from this apartment? Are they going to stop on 67th Avenue and every morning stop traffic for 20 minutes? 
That's my concern. Yes, um, so um, to answer your first question, the um, City of Glendale Transportation Department has reviewed this project um, and has, um, has approved the um, preliminary site plan uh, as far as traffic goes. I cannot speak to where the school bus will be picking up um, and letting off children. Um, unfortunately, we did not receive any comments back from the school district um, after repeated attempts to contact them. Um, so that would be more of a school district question, but it's possible the applicant could answer that question for you. I'll wait and see if the applicant can answer it. Yeah, okay. he's saying yes. All right. Okay, and then just for the sidewalk, not the sidewalks, the pedestrians, I drove by the area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's not a very wide street on Montebello. Uh, Missouri's a little bit better. Mm. How many, I'll ask the applicant, how many parking spaces total do you have? And most apartment complexes, the extra cars are parked on the street. And like I said, Montebello is not a very wide street. So I'd like to them to address that if they would. Of course, of course. Thank you. So. There you are. Would you like me to defer to the applicant? If anybody else okay. has a question? Anything else for Ms. Lavelle? Thank you, Ms. Lavelle. Thank you. Okay, would the applicant or applicant's representative please come forward, state your name for the record, and make your presentation. Thank you, sir. Sounds good, yeah, good evening. Good evening. All right, right there. That's correct. Okay, and I think there's a way to do that. Yeah. Oh, there you go. We got it. My name is Francisco Soto uh, with Soto Design Studio. I am the architect for the project and I am representing uh, Mr. Amid uh, Nyaini, uh, who's over there. And uh, do you need my address as well? That'd be fine. Okay, 6851 South 27th Place in Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want me to answer the questions Mr. first, Gere? or you want me to pre present? The, do you have okay. them? You want him to restate Actually, it? Actually, one of the exhibits, I'll be able to point out some of the some of the areas that okay. you're, that you're uh, looking at. So, uh, and I'm gonna, uh, there's some exhibits here that uh, Christina already covered, so I'm gonna try sure, to you move, just move it along a little there bit. There you go, not a problem. <laughs> uh, first exhibit is really a land a land use map, it's a very large plan. You can see the site kind of in the middle, highlighted by red. Really, this is not denoting specific zoning, but the general land use where the green areas are residential, and you can see how the majority of the area to the east and to the south uh, is, is mainly green, which is residential. Again, there's no differentiation here between uh, single family and multifamily. Uh, the pink is the commercial, the existing commercial areas and the yellow is industrial and other uses which I think they have to do with mm -hmm. commerce parks or some kind of a, um, that type of use but their uh, higher intensity uses are the yellow um, just to give you a snapshot of the area uh, the majority of the commercial areas are along uh, uh, Grand Avenue and then up along Glendale Avenue uh, down, downtown uh, where we're at Right now, this is more of a zoomed area. Again, it's a, it's a zoning uh, map overlay of the area. It shows a little bit of the uses, the, the, the smaller uh, mobile home to the west, uh, the commercial uses to the east, the uh, other multifamily properties directly to the north of this property and also shows some additional uh, multifamily zone properties. And those are the light green. They look a little yellow here, but they're the light, they're supposed to be light green. Uh, those are the uh, higher density multifamily residential. Then the, the light orange are the single family residential. And the blue in this particular map is the commercial zoning. Uh, so. So there is a little bit of a mixture, but the, you know, directly adjacent to us, there is considerable multifamily that uh, why we are requesting this extension. Uh, this is the, act, the uh, city of Glendale 2040 general plan. Uh, 
and it already shows the designation in that uh, tan color. Uh, we're just delineating the subject site, and that is the, you know, it's already delineating the medium to high density uh, residential eight to 12 units per acre. All right, and on the site plan, I went ahead and colorized it a little bit. It's a little bit easier to read than the previous site plan that was presented. Uh, we have, uh, the project has been divided into three main uh, clusters or neighbor, smaller neighborhoods uh, consisting of three buildings each. Uh, we have uh, two, in, well, one in the north, one in the south, and the one in the middle. The one in the middle uh, shows four buildings. The fourth building is the, uh, the leasing office and social clubhouse. Uh, we do have considerable amount of landscaping. Uh, all building clusters have been arranged around central courtyards and that will have, uh, you know, a little ramada, garden, maybe a playground, you know. Th those particular specific areas have not been, you know, completely defined, but the idea is that we will have enhanced landscape so that the, the residents can go out directly from their, from their units and enjoy the open space. Um, Going back to um, uh, <laughs> Commissioner uh, Gear's uh, question, uh, what what makes it a luxury apartment? The level of quality and the finishes. The units are larger than typical units are in this area. Um, also, yeah, just just the the amenities as Christina was describing, the open space and the and the amount of amenities that will be used. We have a a, full, a, a, a very nice pool with a nice ramada and we also have some additional open space opportunities. Again, those have not been, you know, completely uh, narrowed down in terms of exactly what they're going to be, but there's, and I have some, I have one example of a project that we've, we've, I've worked on the past. It's not identical, but it's at least it'll give you a flavor of what we're thinking and what we're looking at. Um, we, uh, there was a question about the bus. There is a great opportunity to park it either at Montebello or in Missouri, depending on the direction of the bus. But yeah, I agree with you. That we, that's not something that we would want to put on 59th Avenue if there was an absolute need for it. I think, actually, let me back up. Uh, we did have a conversation with traffic. Originally, they were wondering whether we needed a bus, a bus stop, a bus stop in this location. It was determined it was not needed in this location. But you know, if if it need, if it needed to occur, we would certainly uh, um, you know contemplate that and consider that. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, let's see what else on the site plan. Um, well, we have the three the three clusters. The the advantages of that it also breaks up the parking instead of one large. You know, when you could get all the buildings together, you end up with a large sea of parking all around it. And then uh, we've actually broken them up into smaller clusters as well because of the configuration of the buildings. Uh, we do have a couple of one-story garage buildings that are lined along 59th Avenue on the north and on the south where we have the double rows of parking. Um, that, that, those garages are strategically placed to screen the larger areas of parking from the street view. Um, um, let, me, um, let me keep going here. This is the plan of the clubhouse. We have the front elevation, it's at the bottom. That's the look as we, as, as we, as we drive up to the property. Uh, we have a, a nice storefront entrance to the left. There's a, like a covered porch where the mailbox, public ma mailboxes will be. The backside has uh, fully um, uh, an arcade or a covered walkway where there'll be ability for additional furniture and activities, ping pong table, you know, outdoor pool table, things like that seating areas. Uh, the center of the clubhouse, the plan is on, the, on there. The center of the clubhouse uh, will have the, um, the social club. To the, the, the right wing will have the, right wing, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the right portion of the clubhouse will have the leasing area with a conference room and a couple offices. The left side of it is a fitness center with a couple of bathrooms. So it's a fairly simple clubhouse, but it does have all the amenities that, that you, one would require in a project like this. 
Uh, the main building, this is one of the, the, the main residential buildings. They are actually broken up, as Christina was alluding. There's breezeways, exterior breezeways that divide up the, the buildings into four unit clusters per floor. So, you know, they're not all one long walk where you see everybody going, walk, walking back and forth. You really, if you live in unit B3, you really only see the, the, the three other neighbors there. So it helps divide, create that sense of, 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 of you know, more of a, a privacy and, and, and also uh, security. Uh, the exteriors, which uh, Christina mentioned before, uh, each breezeway creates an opportunity for an entry element that you know, will contain the stairs and a little walkway upstairs. Um, it just has you know, a little bit, it's a little bit asymmetrical, part of it to create additional articulation. Uh, we brought that, uh, that uh, it's a Sonora, Sonora Shade, I believe is the name of that, that orangey, uh, it's a burnt brown color, and uh, it's trying to keep with that sunrise name with a, you know, a bit, add a little bit of brightness, but it's still keeping it within a, a desert tone. That's the smaller building, uh, building two, which is the one that's in the middle of, of the uh, courtyard, or of the, that creates the, the smaller portion, the exterior elevations. And then this is a sample building. Again, it has similar colors. The diff main difference, and I have to clarify, this particular project is three stories tall. Our proposed project for this location is only two stories, but at least it gives you the, the flavor of the level of landscape, the amenities, the, um, also the clubhouse is only one story. In this particular example, the clubhouse for this project uh, is two stories. This project was done in uh, Chandler, Arizona, and it was in a more tight and more condensed area. But uh, it just kind of gives you a flavor of some of the, the level of finish and level of amenities that we're, we will be uh, looking for in our project. That is pretty much my spiel <laughs> for this evening. Uh, may I, are there any questions? Or Commissioners, any comments? anything for Mr. Soto? Yes. There's no picture here of what it would look like with the fencing around it? Is it, um, she said, a screen type? We're gonna, have a, we're gonna have a combination of, like you see in this particular image, there's, there'll be some solid walls in some areas with them, and then some, some, some see-through. Let me go back, that's, I it just remem remembered one, one, one of you, actually that's the side plan for this project, so you can see how dense that is. That's really uh, packed in there. But uh, in our project, it's not like that. But I wanted to show you, you asked about the gates, the, the gate. pedestrian gates in the development. I'm sorry. One more, there we go. There are gates that connect back to the public and we will have a combination, like where those little courtyards are that face 59th Avenue, we will probably have some vision fence for security and also to, you know, to help. Uh, you know, there, there, there's some security in having some visual connection, but we'll also have a combination of solid walls, fences. We will also have some half walls with some fence on top, just to create some some interest and also some variety along the street front. It's, it's a long street, street front. It's like 1,500 feet, so yeah, we need it. Oh, sorry, it's a gated community, so it's all locked up at night? It is, yes. Okay, yes, yes. and then you have the main entrance. And then there are two exits on Montebello and Missouri Avenue. That's correct. No more on 59th? No, just the one in, on 59th. And it's, we try to place it towards the middle of the, between Missouri and Montebello. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my concern again about buses, I live by Maryland and when the school buses go by, the Glendale Elementary School District does not allow them to drive into the complexes so they stop on the road. And they do it to rush hour traffic and there's you know, 40, 50 kids. Right. And if that happens on 67th on rush hour, that's going to be kind of a major traffic issue. Right. There's no room for you to pull a pull out along 59th Avenue. So if you could look into on the exits on Montebello in Missouri, an area where if you get 30 kids gathering, they're not standing in the right. street, 
and that would probably assist in keeping the buses off of 59th. Okay. Yes. It, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, anything else? Thank you, Mr. Soto. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any speaker cards, but are there any members of the audience that would like to speak? Ms. Lavelle, are there any final comments or procedural guidance? Chairperson Crow, uh, no, there aren't. Thank you. Therefore, the public hearing for case number ZON21-28 is now closed. Do I hear a motion? Chairman Crow. Vice Chair. I'll move that the commission recommends approval for ZON21-28 with the two stipulations as contained in the staff report. Do I have a second? Second. Are there any comments or discussion regarding case number Z on 21-28 by the commissioners? Commissioner Nowakowski. I wanna thank you for presenting today. Um, I really like the concept of four unit clusters, privacy and you know the luxury, the larger rooms. Uh, the one consideration I, I, I hope you do follow up on and you know, respect for Commissioner Gears is the bus pull out on 59th Avenue if the city and y'all can have that discussion, that'd be great, thank you. Commissioners, anything else? Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve case number ZON21-28 subject to the stipulations as outlined in the staff report. I will conduct a roll call vote starting from my far right. Commissioner Crow. Aye. Commissioner Cole. Aye. Vice Chair Hirsch. Aye. Commissioner Nowakowski. Aye. Commissioner Gears. Aye. Chair votes aye. <clears throat> case number ZON21 dash 28 has been recommended for approval subject to the tip stipulations as outlined by the staff. Mr. Gruber, what are the next steps in the process? Chair and members of the commission, your action with respect to case number ZON 21-28 is not final and your recommendation will be forwarded to the city council. Thank you, Mr. Gruber. Our next agenda item is case number GPA 21-11 and ZON 21-27. Mr. Lerma will present the case. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Uh, before you, you have two, two items. Uh, the applicant, Stephen Anderson, on behalf of Gamage and Burnham, has applied and is requesting um, two separate re requests. The first one has to do with the general plan amendment. The applicant is seeking to amend the, the property's general plan designation from high density residential 20 units to the acre to downtown mixed use. And the second request is for the entitlement process. The applicant is seeking to rezone the property uh, from multi-residential to planned area development for a project that will consist of, a mixed use project that will consist of 368 unit, uh, 368 multifamily project and limited commercial uses. <clears throat> Here's a site map showing the relation between the city hall and the project site. The project site is approximately a mile west of city hall. It's located on the, it's located east of the southeast corner of 67th Avenue and Glendale Avenue. 
<clears throat> Again, the project site is approximately 14.6 acres. It's comprised of four separate parcels uh, located east of the southeast corner of 67th Avenue and Glendale Avenue. As you see here, it's a vacant site, currently a vacant site. Historically, it's been used for agricultural purposes. To the east, you'll have uh, Glendale Manor Apartments, which is a multifamily uh, project that's been there uh, for a few years. To the south, you also have a multifamily use. Uh, to the west, again, multifamily project. Uh, directly to the west of the property along the south, East corner of 67th and, and Glendale is uh, uh, Maricopa County Superior Court. And to the north, you'll have uh, commercial uses that deal with auto maintenance and auto repair. <clears throat> Here's a general plan map again, just showing the Properties line use designation. The property is designated as high density residential up to 20 units to the acre. Uh, the property to the east has the same designation. Property to the south has a mid high density uh, up to eight units to the acre. Uh, to the west, you have the same uh, land use designation, and to the north, you have general commercial. Zoning map showing the existing zoning classification of the property. The property, again, is zoned R4, uh, multifamily residential. The same is, could be the same to the properties to the south and to the east. Uh, on the corner, you'll see C3, where the um, Maricopa Superior Court uh, offices are at. What I wanted to show you here is just the comparison between the existing uh, development standards and those that the applicant is proposing through their PAD um, project narrative, the, the proposed development standards. As you look at these development standards, uh, keep in mind that the applicant uh, is seeking uh, urban style of design. Uh, to make a note the first uh, on the first row, um, the densities, uh, he's proposing to increase the, the densities. Again, he's asking for 360, 368, sorry, 368 units to the acre, and that would be equivalent to 25 units to the acre, um, which is so he's seeking a, a higher density than the, what the R zoning district will, would allow, which is 20 dwelling units per the acre. Uh, a note, again, keep a note on the second on the second row, the building setbacks. He's uh, decreasing the the setbacks uh, in order to push the buildings further to the front, to the sidewalk, and to the street. Again, this is the type of design that that's what we would consider urban type of design. If you see the area within the general within the general area. Uh, site design is more of a, t a traditional way where the, the building is pushed to the back and you'll have a landscaping and, and the parking to the front with a driving aisle. So this is gonna be the opposite type of design where the buildings are pushed to the front uh, of the street and all parking is to the back. <clears throat> on this slide, just to keep note on the, um, on the parking stalls, uh, per the R4 zoning district, uh, he would be required to provide 689 spaces. He is proposing 488. Keep in mind uh, where the project is at, it's located within a major corridor that uh, for uh, public transportation. And the, the applicant is, is um, hoping that a lot of the those uh, that are residing within the project are gonna be supporting the public transportation within this area. He is proposing in, in total 488 spaces to the site. 482 are not going to be uh, are going to be reserved, and six spaces are going to be dedicated to the limited commercial to the site. Uh, make a note on the, on, on this uh, slide on the building heights for the R4 zoning district. He would be maxed out at. 30 feet based on, again, the density that he's proposing and the type of design, the urban type of, this, type of design. He is seeking for one of the buildings to go up to 60 feet, which is gonna be the one that's gonna be located on Glendale Avenue. And um, 
the, the, the rest of the buildings will, will be at, at three stories or 40 feet, with exception of the, the amenity building. Here's the project site again, the, the, and the site plan, the north is oriented to the, to the, uh, to the east. Um, as you see here, I just want you to get an idea of access points to the site. Uh, principal access is gonna be along Glendale Avenue and secondary access is gonna be along 67th Avenue. Here you see the building layout as well. Uh, building A that's uh, abutting Glendale Avenue will be the four story building. Um, the rest of the buildings will be uh, three, feet, uh, three stories, with the exception again of building E that's to, to, to the center uh, going west of the project site. Uh, here within the la conceptual landscaping plan, you'll get a better idea of the building layout. A few things to keep in mind while, while uh, looking at the site plan, the applicant is proposing uh, a, a variety of, of amenities to the project site. The, the building E again is, is gonna be the amenity building, internally will be a community room and other amenities to, to the residents. Uh, directly to the south of that is gonna be a play area with uh, water features. Um, the area between building C and building B is gonna be an open space area, a uh, gathering area with within Within that area is also gonna be a dog park. As far as other amenities are gonna be internal uh, pedestrian uh, paths that are gonna be connected to other uh, project areas, uh, external project areas. Again, uh, building eight uh, abutting Glendale Avenue will be a four-story building. The, the ground floor or the first floor level will be dedicated solely to the commercial uses that are gonna be permitted that are identified within the, the, the PAD booklet. Uh, the, the second and the four, second, third and fourth story the, the floors will be dedicated to residential uses. The applicant is uh, proposing again um, units that are gonna be one bedroom, two bedroom and three bedroom units um, that will add up to 368 units to the site. Here's, here's uh, just conceptual elevations of what the buildings will look like. There's, they're still at the conceptual stage. The applicant has not submitted yet for a design review. Here is a, a project that the applicant worked on in, in, in Tempe. Uh, the, the, the building layout is, is completely different. What I wanted to show with this project is basically for the commission to get an idea of what the urban style of design is. Again, as you see here, the buildings are pushed to the front, to the sidewalk and the, the parking area um, and the other amenities are attracted more towards the back of the building. One note that I forgot to state about um, some of the other site designs to the project, which we, you'll see within the development standard table, is that they are not re, uh, requiring uh, gated areas. This will not be a gated uh, multifamily project. Um, and, and the reason why is because they wanna have more of an open welcoming area to the site. So along the street frontages, which is gonna be along building G, F, and A, there will not be any uh, type of gates for, uh, for access to the site. The applicant has, come, has uh, reached out to the citizens, to the surrounding property owners, and has completed the citizens outreach process. A virtual neighborhood meeting was held on November 3rd. Uh, within that meeting, there were three attendees. Um, there were no issues, uh, but since then, neither the applicant or the or city staff has received any type of comments from, from, from property owners. The citizen participation final report is included within your staff report, within your packet, sorry. With a review, uh, the staff has made the, the following uh, findings. Um, the applicant or the project meets the policies and goals of the general plan specifically having to do with uh, developing with smart growth, connecting the project to existing and future transportation uh, systems, and providing uh, 
a variety of ho uh, housing options. In this case, it will be multifamily uh, in nature. The project meets the intent of the, of the PED, which encourages a mixed-use development. Again, this is a site that's been vacant for a substantial amount of time, and the applicant has provided a, a, a valid use to the site, um, which will accommodate or, or support the existing surrounding uses that are within that area. Again, the, the applicant has a provided extensive design initiative towards the project. This is something that's gonna be uh, different than what you see within that project area or within that, that area. And this will be more of a, a urban type of design that's gonna stick out a little bit within that area based on the fact of the building layout and the way that, that the buildings are oriented. One note that I did forget to mention is that the units that are in the bottom that are located along 67th Avenue and Glendale Avenue, on the ground floor units, um, the access or, or the, the front of the units are gonna be facing the street. So access is gonna be the, the, the front of the units or the, the, the front door to the units are gonna either be facing 67th Avenue for those that are oriented towards 67th Avenue and Glendale Avenue towards those that are facing Glendale Avenue. Again, uh, no perimeter uh, walls or gates will be required along 67th Avenue and Glendale Avenue to provide more of a welcoming feel to the development. On-site traffic is adequate uh, within your packet. Uh, TIS was included, the traffic, uh, traffic department has reviewed it and has uh, agreed with the findings of the TIS. All other uh, applicable departments have also reviewed it and have re recommendation, uh, recommended approval. With that, uh, should the Planning Commission motion to recommend approval of GPA 2111, it should be as written. And should the Commission recommend approval of ZON 2127, it should be with the following stipulations. Stipulation number one, development shall be in substantial conformance to the PAD booklet titled Centerline at Glendale, date stamp February 4th, 2022. Uh, stipulation number two, a turn, a turn lane on 67th Avenue northbound shall be required. Such lane shall be designed to a length of 150 feet turn lane plus 100 feet of taper. Stipulation number three, a 30 foot by 30 foot right of way triangle shall be dedicated at the corner of 67th Avenue and Ocotillo Road. And stipulation number four, a new sidewalk on 67th Avenue shall be six feet wide and detached from the curb. Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this completes my presentation. The applicant is here. Uh, the commission has any questions for, for him or for myself. Commissioners, anything for Mr. Lerma? Mr. Lerma looks good. Oh, you do. Commissioner Nowakowski. Mr. Lerma, you, you said there's no perimeter wall on Glendale and 67th Avenue. How about Ocotillo? So um, again, the perimeter or the, the, their vision is to not have it along street frontages. Right, and Ocotillo, I believe, will have a street frontage. Um, the applicant can correct me on this, but I believe they won't have a, 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 a gate along Ocotillo Road. The only type of uh, perimeter wall will be uh, towards the west, which is, sorry, towards the east, which is abutting the existing development, multifamily development. And I want to clarify my understanding. You said 10 foot uh, setback from Glendale Avenue. I mean, the building will be 10 feet away from the street? It will be from the property line. Uh, the setbacks are gonna from be measured from the property line to the front of the building. Okay, it'll be four story. The and one then, on Glendale Avenue will. And then can you just uh, let me know if there's been discussion on the limited commercial uses designated on the first floor? And abutting Glendale Avenue. Yeah, yes, not to go into, into a lot of detail on on that, but uh, initially the, the, the applicant wanted to have all the uses that are allowed within the Glendale uh, Glenda Center Line, which is a, a zoning district within the, the, within the city. Uh, 
we had substantial discussions with them to limit the type of uses that would be uh, allowed within that that really didn't uh, meet the needs uh, of this area. So those uses are listed within the PAD narrative, uh, which is in part of your packet within there. Uh, it details the uses that would be allowed w within uh, the first floor of building A, which are more retail in nature, uh, office use retail uh, services. And then just confirming dog park and walkway connections, it, would that be open to the neighborhood? Uh, that would be more of a question for for, for the applicant. Being that uh, this is not gonna be gated, I'm not sure what type of security they're gonna have there, but I'm, uh, uh, like any type of uh, multifamily project, the, 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 uh, the amenities that, that are offered are more for the, the residents of the, of the project. Okay, uh, just saying I'm very familiar with this area and I, I would like to hear from the applicant in regards to how to propose to create safer neighborhoods for the residents who plan on moving in there. So thank you, Mr. Lerma. Just, just with that note, um, going forward, uh, they will need to submit for design review. Uh, keeping in mind of, of where the project is located, uh, there might be a lot of issues with, with the security issues. Uh, when you compare it to the RDDM, which is a residential design manual that, that we compare it whatever project we're getting in, uh, the RDDM deals a lot and makes recommendations, so security issues don't arise with any type of project. To, um, yeah. If it has to do with uh, building layout, building, building orientation, lighting, uh, those type of uh, design that, that will limit the, the security issues. Yeah, I, I was hoping, and the applicant can speak on that, is um, whether they'd be receptive to SEPTED from the police department going there, and uh, for, that stands for Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design, and the purpose to create safer neighborhoods through architectural design landscape design, um, signage, and, and how circulation is in the, the complex. I think that knowing this area and what happens in the area, uh, that would be very important to me. Thank you. Gentlemen, anything else for Mr. Lerma? Thank you, Mr. Lerma. <clears throat> Would the applicant or applicant's representative please come forward, state your name for the record, and make your presentation. Did you want to call us up? Thank you. If I touch your machine, I'll break it. Yeah, so when you go, change yeah. the slide and just press down. Okay, thanks. Mr. Chairman, good evening. My name is Steven Anderson. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Gamage and Burnham. Uh, the staff report indicates that we represent the family uh, partnership. Actually, the family partnership's the owner, owner of the property. We represent the applicant, which is the Gorman Company. Um, and uh, Dan Clocky is with me from the Gorman Company to make the bulk of the presentation. But before uh, I turn the podium over to Dan, uh, Dan and I wanted to take a moment to thank the staff um, for their work on the project. Obviously, we're pleased to be before you this evening with a staff recommendation for approval, uh, and, uh, and and obviously that's always welcome. The recommendation is subject to stipulations, and we're comfortable with the stipulations that the staff has included. But I'm actually talking about process. Uh, this is an affordable housing project, and uh, and so we're working closely with the Arizona Department of Housing, uh, and they have their own set of deadlines. Um, and so we've asked uh, uh, quite a bit of the staff uh, at the City of Glendale in the process of this project, and they have been very uh, prompt uh, and thorough in their review of this project in a way that has allowed us to be cooperative with the Department of Housing, so I did want to note that for your record that uh, we appreciated the staff's efforts uh, procedurally to help us meet those guidelines. And with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Dan. Hey, Stephen. Oh, sorry, I'm ready to go. Good evening, uh, uh, Chair and uh, members of the Commission. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak for, uh, to, uh, before you tonight. My name is Dan Clocky, and I serve as the Senior Project Manager for Gorman & Company uh, for our Arizona office. And before getting into the project a little bit, I wanted to talk a little bit about who we are, how we have built here in this community for, for many years, um, just to give you a sense of, 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 of who we are and the kinds of projects that we build and our track record. Um, so I don't 
don't know if you have, uh, I'm assuming you have a TV in front of you or you can see what's up on the, <laughs> on the, uh, the screen there. Um, but uh, let me go this way. So uh, Gorman and Company, uh, just to give you a sense of who we are, um, we not only build projects, but we're, we're really focused on how do we revitalize communities and neighborhoods, and how do we work with those neighborhoods to make sure that the projects we build integrate into them, um, become part of them, and then create an atmosphere where the residents of that community, of that, of that residential community, can go and enjoy the amenities and the retail and all the different things that the community around it offers. Um, and so we've been building uh, across the country for since 1984, uh, when our founder Gary Gorman created the company in Wisconsin. Arizona is actually our largest market. Um, the demand here for affordable housing is enormous. Um, you can't. Uh, open the paper these days without reading an article about um, rent rates going up at astronomical uh, 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 astronomical numbers. I think last year was 30%. Um, and so our our role here is to create good quality, well-designed, well-managed housing that serves our community and the workers in our community. So. Just a little bit more about the company. Um, the, uh, the, the CEO of the company is Brian Swanton, and I don't know if any of you know Brian or not. He's, um, he's kind of upset that he's not here tonight. Uh, and the reason is, is because Brian actually used to work for the city of Glendale, lived in Catlin Court, lived in North Glendale, um, and has recently become the, the CEO of Gorman and Company. And so he has to spend a lot of time in Wisconsin where the corporate headquarters are. Uh, but he wanted to be here tonight. I'm sure he's listening on YouTube and gonna critique my, my presentation here. But, um, this is a community that we've been in for a long time already. Um, and so we're, this would be our third project in the city of Glendale. Uh, we've had wonderful experiences here so far. Um, one of the reasons why um, I chose to work for this company was because of how it's set up. And as the presentation says, we're a vertically integrated company. We're not just developers. We have an architectural firm in-house, we have a construction firm in-house, we have a management firm in-house, which means we all work together to build a project because we're gonna be in it for the long haul. Um, in these kinds of projects, the way that it's financed, we have to own it for at least 15 years. So while a lot of developers will build and flip and, and, and sell and move on, we're here as your neighbor for at least 15 years and probably 30 years. So I think it's really important to, that, that you understand that we're not just coming here tonight to ask for your permission and then walk away. We're here for the long haul as your neighbors. Um, just give you a sense also in terms of what we've built in Arizona. We've already built 1,500 units. We have about 500 under construction right now and 2,000 in the pipeline. So we're a very active company with a lot of different uh, projects going on statewide. So just to give you a sense of some of the other projects, because I know it's difficult to look at a, a drawing or a, a site plan and say, well, what's this gonna look like? I wanna give you a few examples of projects that we've built here in the metro area, just to give you a sense of, of, of what they are. Um, so a couple at the top there, one in Tempe and one in Avondale. You can see the one in Tempe is a much more urban style. It's right uh, on the light rail alignment um, and, and serves folks that are, are mostly working there in downtown Tempe. Um, but the bottom two are two obviously here in the city of Glendale. The Glendale Enterprise Loft is literally just a couple of blocks I'm turned around, but up the street here this way to the west across from, from the high school. This was the first project that we built in the state of Arizona. Um, and so back in 2008, uh, it was actually it had the only crane, as, is what I'm told, uh, in the year 2009, the city of Glendale was at that project. So we build through the good times and the tough times because we know the need is great all the time. Um, the other project that you see there, Ironwood Village, again, uh, just a few blocks away. Um, once in a while, we will buy an existing apartment complex. This um, apartment, shall we say, was challenged. Uh, I believe it had the highest number of police calls uh, in the entire city uh, before we purchased it. Uh, we went in, we rehabilitated the entire project, uh, and obviously with our management team, worked to make sure that the residents who were there were contributing to the community and doing good things in the community. And so that has completely transformed that project. So we're looking forward to, to doing another project here, uh, but just a, 
a couple others um, to show you, just sort of styles and so forth, so you have a sense of that. We do a lot of three and four story product. Uh, we tend to do them in infill areas um, when we're building in the metro area because we want to build where people have jobs, where people have transportation, where there are amenities that the city has already developed in infrastructure. We want to use that and enhance that. So these are just a few of the other projects um, that, that you can take a look at. The other thing I want to point out is just real fast, um, uh, Mr. Larima showed the outside of this project in Tempe, this Gracie's Village. Um, this is the quality of the interior of the project. So this is the lobby uh, of that uh, uh, project there along the light rail, just to give you a sense of, of how we build. Uh, I know you're asking questions, why does, why does one make it luxury or so forth? This is affordable and this is high quality. Our goal is that you don't know if it's affordable or market rate because it's the same quality. And that's how we build it and that's how we run it. So um, it wasn't talked about because we're not actually using the centerline overlay district zoning district. Um, but I wanted to put this up because I don't know how familiar folks are with it. It's a plan for this street that was created by the residents, by the businesses about 10 or 12 years ago. In fact, Brian Swanton was part of that commission um, that helped put together this plan for the area. Um, and the desires um, of the people who put that plan together working with city staff uh, was to create a more walkable, urban environment, um, shaded sidewalks, uh, mixed use development, more intense or dense housing. Um, and so this was really our inspiration for how to design this project. We were taking it right out of what the residents and the businesses called for uh, back 10 or 12 years ago. Um, and so while we're not using the exact zoning code that's in there, pretty much everything you see in the PAD is allowable underneath this, this zoning code that's there. Um, so we want to celebrate the work that the people did that, uh, 10 or 12 years ago and start to build to what those goals and desires were. So um, why choose this site? Um, we always think through this process a lot. We don't just go out looking for any piece of land to build housing on. We wanna make sure that our residents are served by jobs, by transit, by amenities, by retail, all the things that everybody wants to be near. Um, and so this site does just that. So if you look around at what's there, um, it was already mentioned, obviously transit is a huge part of, of what we try to build near. Uh, we want our residents to not have to spend a lot of money on cars. We want them spending their money on education, on healthcare, on things that their families need. And so we almost always build near major transit and our residents tend to use that transit. So that's literally on 67th Avenue out the front door and on Glendale Avenue out the front door. It's, it's perfect. Um, over to the west, there's a, a Walmart, uh, Walmart market, neighborhood market. So there's groceries close by. There are multiple schools. Uh, Mountain Park Health Clinic is gonna build a large facility just about a block and a half away. Um, and then there's other retail on the north side of Glendale. And of course, you know, downtown's a hop, skip, and a jump down the street. So all the amenities and all the work that you've done here in downtown Glendale, our residents will be allowed to use then as well. So I know there were uh, questions and so forth. Um, I can jump back to answering those questions, but I thought I'd just pull up the site plan. So if there are some more questions that, that, that folks have, happy to answer that. Um, let me, uh, I jotted down a couple of them, um, but please interrupt me if I'm not answering the, the, the questions um, uh, to your liking. Um, so the, the, the idea of how we're developing this site. Um, this planning area calls for an urban feel. You can create safety in a couple different ways. You can create safety by building really high walls and trying to block everything out from coming in, or you can build a more urban, dense style development where there's a lot more eyes and a lot more people around that tend to keep bad things away from happening. As somebody who's lived in downtowns my entire adult life, this is how it works. This is, this is just how it works. Um, so we had decided from a, from a safety perspective to not wall it off. The buildings tend to act as walls mostly around the perimeter 
And so where there are openings, those openings are gonna have eyes on them. And to the, the SEPT head, we build that into all of our developments. We always talk to the police about, you know, is, is this an okay sort of corner? Is it well lit? Um, we work with folks to make sure that we're safe because the last thing in the world we want is for something to happen to one of our residents. Um, and so we will work with the Glendale City Police, obviously, if, if they have some concern about any design elements. Um, and so uh, hopefully that, that answers your question. Um, in terms of the commercial uses, the, the, the plan for the district calls for a mixed use environment. And so the ground floor of the building up on Glendale provides an opportunity to do just that. Um, this is not gonna be high intensity um, commercial use. Uh, what we're looking at doing, quite honestly, is creating a commercial kitchen where small businesses can come in to use the facility to help generate product for whether it's farmers markets or their small businesses or something along those lines. Um, and so we're, ch we're chatting with people right now to look at potentially setting that up. We're looking at the possibility of having several small, I don't even wanna call them, not offices, but just um, business use areas where you could have potentially short-term leases for people who are trying out a business just to sort of to get going and see what would happen. We're gonna have an, uh, a pretty extensive exercise area in there for classes and so forth. So we're looking to animate the building because that's what makes a great urban environment. When there's things going on that you can see in the windows as you walk by on the sidewalk just like any kind of great urban area would have. Um, what am I missing? Oh, we always have a security camera system in, in all of our developments so that we can make sure that residents are safe um, and if, God forbid, anything happens that we do have that on camera. So we do that with all of our developments, that's standard. Um, okay, I don't know if I answered everyone's questions. I tried jotting them down, but do, do folks have any questions? Commissioners? Gear. Commissioner Gear. I have a question on the commercial use first floor. If you have a business there, where are your customers going to park? So we do have some set aside in the back uh, for, for that uh, use. So there are six or eight parking spots. We're not looking to have businesses where you're gonna have 30, 40, 50 people there at a time. These are gonna be more service-oriented type businesses or uses where you may have one or two customers at a time. So if someone's using a commercial kitchen, you might have two or three people using it. And so we'll be able to park them sufficiently. And as far as the commercial kitchen, you, you're you going to pre-plumb it, run all the venting all the way up through the fourth floor to get it so it can be occupied without the applicant spending hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. doing that work? We were talking through this today, and this is this is early on. I don't want to promise that this is the definite thing we're doing, but all that is already built in in terms of venting out through the rooftop. You, you, you put in all the grease traps, you put in all the venting that you need, all the main infrastructure, because you, going back and doing that is just prohibitive. Thank you, and then one question, why is there no access off of Ocotillo? You have this large complex you have to get it at the Glendale. I know I come out of Cotillo and to try to turn left and head south on 67th is pretty tough and you have 50, 60 people trying to get to work. There's no lights, there's no light on Cotillo and it's just, um, could be a nightmare. So that's why we actually don't have an egress on Acatillo. We don't have any cars going out there, so we're not going to load up Acatillo anymore for the neighbors that are on Acatillo. Oh, no, that's not what the problem is. The problem is just trying to get across 67th. So that's the way the that, if, if you look at the site plan, um, drivers can only go right out of 67th, onto 67th. So we worked with staff, it will be, there's a, they call it like an elongated pork chop, basically preventing cars from going left out of our. You can't, if you can go you right. Down to I 10, so you get, okay. Or you go out to Glendale and try to make a left, and can you make a left off of Glendale? I believe there's a left hand turn on Glendale. That's, that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> it, 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 uh, what I can tell you is, again, why we have a reduced number of parking spaces is because we don't have as many drivers. Um, not that there aren't any drivers, obviously, there, there are drivers, um, but we're not gonna bring the flood of traffic that uh, a different type of development would bring. Um, and so 
we've, we've done this enough times in enough places that we feel pretty good about, about how we've worked with staff to make sure that, that the numbers aren't gonna be too prohibitive. The way that they egress out of the site will be protective of those residents. Um, and so I think, I, I think we're gonna be okay. All right, and then one more question about security. The apartment complex south of there on the south side of Ocotillo and east are fairly high crime sites. You've talked to the Glendale, and if you have this open architecture, you have cameras, but you're gonna protect your cars from disappearing, and how do you secure things like that in an open architecture? So we have plenty of folks that will be on site working. Um, we are going to be very, very cognizant of that. We understand our neighbor to the east. Um, I've walked it, I've driven it, I, I know what's going on there. Um, what we're trying to do, honestly, is begin that change. And uh, we're not gonna do it at the expense of our residents, but we are gonna be that change that begins to alter how that part of Glendale Avenue feels. And then one more comment about the, the lofts that you built in 2008, they look as new now as they did when you put them up. So and congratulations on that. Thank you, sir. And that's why owning it for a long time and managing it is what we wanna do. Thank, thank you. you. Any other questions? Oh, just one other thing. Just to give you, we just got this like a day or two ago. So just to give you a sense of its place in the neighborhood um, and, and how, it, how it works with, with the, the various buildings around it. Um, the building, the development to the east, we were just talking about, um, has three story buildings. So it'll be somewhat similar of height. Um, the only really tall or taller building is up on Glendale Avenue. Um, but I think it, it slots in nicely uh, into the community and begins that process of, of making Glendale Avenue a more walkable and kind of urban feel like that plan calls for. So obviously it doesn't have a color yet, but <laughs> we'll let staff help us out with that a little bit. So, so any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Glocky. Commissioners, anything else for Mr. Glocky? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. I don't have any speaker cards, and since there is no audience, I think we're good. Mr. Lerma, are there any final comments or procedural guidance? <clears throat> Mr. Chair, members of the commission, no more, no more comments. Thank you, Mr. Lerma. The public hearing for case number GPA 21-11 and ZON 21-27 is now closed. I would like to take these separately. So do I hear a motion for GPA 21-11? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Cole. I would move to recommend approval of GPA 21-11 as written. Do I have a second? So. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Are there any further comments about GPA 21-11? Okay, hearing none, I have a motion and a second to approve case number GPA 21-11 subject to the stipulations, which I guess there are none, so we will approve it as written. I will conduct a roll call vote starting from my right. Commissioner Crow. Aye. Commissioner Cole. Aye. Vice Chair Hirsch. Aye. Commissioner Nowakowski. Aye. Commissioner Gears. Aye. Chair votes aye. I will now entertain a motion for ZON 21-27. Chairman Crow. Vice Chair Hirsch. I move that the commission recommends approval of ZON 21-27 with the four stipulations as contained in the staff report. Do I have a second? So move. I have a motion and a second to approve case number ZON 21-27 subject to the stipulations as outlined in the staff report. 
I will now conduct a roll call again from my far right. Commissioner Crow. Aye. Commissioner Cole. Mr. Chair, to comment in my vote? Of course. Mr. Clark, thank you for your presentation. Uh, Enterprise Lofts is a great project, and I think this is gonna be a great addition to the neighborhood, so thank you for bringing it forward. I vote aye. Vice Chair Hirsch. Aye. Commissioner Nowakowski. I would like to make a comment. Certainly. I too think this is a different type of project, and I've known your reputation for, for years, Mr. Clocky, having worked in the city of Phoenix for Mayor Gordon as his affordable housing rep. Uh, it's counterintuitive. Some of the, the items you're proposing and so I, I put a lot of trust in that you will follow up with, SEP, with the SEPTED review. With that, I vote aye. Commissioner Gears. Aye. Chair votes aye. Case number GPA 21-11 and ZON 21-7 has been recommended for approval subject to the stipulations as outlined in the staff report for ZON 2127 and as written for GPA 21-11. Mr. Gruber, what are the next steps in the process? Chair and members of the commission, your actions with respect to cases GPA 21-11 and ZON 21-27 are not final, but your recommendations will be forwarded to the city council. Thank you, Mr. Gruber. Ms. Perry, is there any other business this evening? Chairperson, there are none. Are there any commission comments or suggestions? I do have one comment about uh, our former Vice Chair Ed Nyberg. He is making some uh, steady, but slow, but steady progress and is having phone conversations with his friends. And so we are delighted to hear that. For those of the, you that are unaware of what happened to uh, Ed Nyberg, he was struck by a vehicle while uh, in the crosswalk several weeks ago and was really not expected to live. So we are excited about his uh, slow recovery and it looks like he's doing well. Are there any other staff reports, Ms. Perry? Chair, not at this time. Okay, the next regular meeting of the Planning Commission will be held on April 28th, 2022 at 6 p.m. If there's no further business, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. It's, it's been moved and seconded and I have a motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.